How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Empire of the Sharks. This is from 2017 and is one of those Sci-Fi Channel Asylum co-productions. This was directed by Mark Atkins and stars John Savage, Jack Armstrong, and Tandy Sebe. Now this is in the same universe as Planet of the Sharks. They even have the same director. However, outside of a cameo, they're totally different characters. This is one of those same universe, different characters type stories. And granted how Planet of the Sharks has a pretty definitive ending, I'm guessing this is actually a prequel. Uh, but whatever, new crew, different story, same world. And I will say this is a step in the right direction, J just a little bit. In the first movie, we wasted so much time with just random techno babble. There's less of that here. There is still a little, but there's a lot less. And we also, in the first movie, didn't get near enough of those cool raft cities. And here, they made an effort for more of the movie to take place on the raft cities and to try to get a little bit more out of the atmosphere. Now, does that mean it worked? No. We're a step in the right direction, but we are definitely not there yet. And this movie really just suffers from the modern Asylum production values. Everything feels like it was made on autopilot, the movie feels really cheap, and it just kind of feels soulless. And that that's going to make a movie that should feel big and it should feel over the top and it should feel cartoony really somehow feel boring. I mean, post-apocalyptic shark raft worlds? That should be really cool and I don't know how I got so bored watching a movie like that. But honestly, you don't really care about any of the characters. At times, their motivations are a little hazy and to be honest, this movie does have a problem where it can get pretty choppy and that really does like the edit and the plot really do suffer because there feels like a few scenes that like skip over a few a few minutes and it just kind of feels a little awkward. Overall, this is a movie I wanted to like more than I did because I wanted to see Planet of the Sharks but with more of the cool Wrath stuff and and I kind of got that here, but it's still made by the modern Asylum, and it has that barely scraping by, just turn out a movie type feel to it. And yeah, sadly, it just came out soulless, and I wish it was cartoony fun. Uh, in order to analyze the movie further, I do want to do a bit of analysis. I'm going to be talking about the plot and talking about some things that don't work. I'll be avoiding major spoilers so I won't ruin the end, but let's go ahead and dig down and try to get to the root of some of this. We open up with a warlord going to this village and the basic idea is that the warlord has power over them because they're supplying clean water, however there's barely enough to go around in this village. Their tribute isn't good enough and he says you have to give me twice as much by tomorrow, which doesn't make any logical sense because if they couldn't support one unit in presumably a week, I don't know where he suspects you to pull this inventory out of, but whatever. And when they say they're not getting enough water, he says, well, let me take some of your people then. And when they try to fight back, he reveals his power. He has shark gloves that through minority report gesturing, he can make the sharks do stuff, and we do get, you know, a little bit of shark action. Honestly, I think there's less shark action in this one than the first one. I could have gone for more cartoony, fun shark stuff. Uh, but also, if you're taking the people because of water level distribution, I think we should have ample water now because in addition to taking people, you've killed some. They take them back to their little base and we get a, a few things that just don't quite work. For example, the warlord character that's doing this like Jeff Goldblum type deal, turns out he has a boss above him which really doesn't make much sense because we spent so much time setting up this character and now we're just getting like, oh, this less interesting guy is actually the big bad. And then there's a bit where even though they have the technology to control sharks, 
one of the girls that they took has a medallion and she has the power to control sharks and that fascinates them even though they have the technology to do this already and also now there's magic in this universe because why not I should also point out that the villains drive a silly looking little tugboat with plastic Home Depot skeletons on it it's supposed to be intimidating I appreciate the effort but yeah, those are plastic. I, I, I don't know. But anyway, back at the village, we get our two leads, this guy and this girl. The guy wants to save the girl that can control sharks. I thought it was like more of a mentor relationship, but later in the movie it implies that they're in love. I, I guess. You see, the warlords attack so early, I don't know who any of these people are. I get wanting to open with a hook, but when the hook cuts off character setup and you don't do a great job establishing these characters later, it kind of ruins it. But anyway, he has a ill-conceived plan where two of them hop in a two-person sub and just try to attack the base and surprise, surprise, they lose because they couldn't win on their home turf. Why would they be able to win against more of them? And if the sub's only two people, how did you expect to move the prisoners? Whatever. Uh, after they get repelled there, they decide to go to the local bar and assemble a ragtag team of adventurers. Because, well, that's a fun concept, right? But none of them are super over the top. I mean, there's one guy that wants to blow stuff up, so he's kind of fun. But then there's like a, a guy that has sonar stuff and they need him to make a map and there's like a girl that can hold her breath for a really long time. None of them are super interesting. Whatever though, ragtag team of adventurers, right? Well, then we get the bad choppy part. Like the whole movie's kind of choppy, but there's one part where they get a boat and then he finds out that they actually stole the boat, but they stole it from the same warlord bad guys they're going against. And it turns out inside the boat is something super valuable, like pieces to their water filter. And he decides to just be a good boy and give the parts back. And they awkwardly do this jump cut to just the boat sailing away out of nowhere. And you can barely comprehend because it's so stupid of a decision and the fact that they jump cut it to just it returning. But then there's all this other stuff about how one of them decided to rig it with a bomb and then he even calls the warlord to make sure he doesn't explode even though again, he's the bad guy. And then the warlord gets mad and kills one red shirt and hearing this over the radio is going to inspire the last member of their crew, this captain character, to come in and give them a boat. That is so much that happens way too quickly. Like, for real, it feels like scenes are missing. It feels like this should have at least been double the runtime to get to this point in the movie. It feels so awkward and choppy, and the guy randomly acts like a little wuss who's trying to help out the villains, and honestly, it barely makes any sense and is super hard to follow. Anyway, you know how the rest is gonna go. They're gonna try to save them, and it's gonna be an okay action sequence. Overall, it still is just kind of boring. It's playing with bigger pieces than it did last time, it's playing with better tropes than it did last time, and more stuff is happening, and, and there's not as many totally useless characters, but still, it's just, somehow, it's still dull, and it's actually kind of amazing that the movie is still dull, despite how much is going for it. You really do need some passion and you do need some investment. If you just keep scraping by, putting in the bare minimum, then the movies are going to suffer despite their potential. Like, don't put in a ton of money, because I get these are supposed to be cheap, but I feel like if they just put in 5% extra effort, you would really see the reward coming out the other end. These are just autopilot movies, and it kind of does suck, but it's at least a little better than the last one. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. 
This should be my Asylum Shark Movies playlist, where you can see my reviews for things like Sharknado movies, multi-headed shark attack movies, Mega Shark vs. movies. They've made a lot of shark movies. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.